Hello and welcome. It's Monday Club. This is the third take. Um, and, well, it's not Monday. It's Thursday. Um, and we're drinking tea tonight. Um, however, we got blown out. So we had to put out the bat signal. No one answered. So we got Will from Verso on. Say hello, Will. All right, no one hello, can hear Will. that. <laughs> so Will is hello, a bit Will. nervous. He's a bit nervous to be on camera. <laughs> Um, he's even worn a hat um, because actually he yeah. sports a man bun. Come on, I do at the moment. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I do. Show the people. <laughs> Wait, you want to see that? Look at here. There it is. Look at it. Oh. Uh, wow, well, mate! So I can't even. I can't even. I can't, even, I can't believe we're associated with someone with a man bun. It's unacceptable. Not a single grey in that as well. I might add. <laughs> I wish I could. Say, I, I can't say the same. I'm afraid. Yeah, you're going to be salt and pepper very soon. Um, this week, um, obviously, this episode is brought to you by Verso. Will happens to be the um, CEO or MD, whatever. The, I don't know if you can be a CEO or, or whatever, of uh, Verso. Oh, yeah. The founder, the creator. The um, well, We're not here to talk about Verso, so don't switch off immediately. Um, we are here to talk about just having an electrical catch-up, digging a bit about the um, wholesale world, the board world, and... All the bits that go into it. Get some interesting facts across the line. Um, Jamie, I know you're sitting there waiting to say something ridiculous. No, I was just going to say, full disclosure, we asked Will on, didn't we? It's not, this is it's not part of our sponsorship. We asked him on because no. we want to talk to him. No, well, here's the thing, right? I've spoke to Will a few times um, and he's on the same sort of level as us. He's not fully stupid like us, but he can have a bit of banter with us. So I is that a warning to me? But that, seems... yeah, just 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 before the haters say in the comments, yeah, we asked him on because we want to talk to him. He's not part of our sponsorship deal, although, and we're trying to extract no, some double sockets out of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? Anyway, right. So, Will, why don't you tell yes. us a little bit of story about um, why you thought not being an electrician thought you was hard enough to go out there and make a fusible company? <laughs> uh, well, I worked in aerospace for a while. Um, so right, hold on. This sounds like transition. a Jamie story. Hang on a minute. This, this up, sounds man. like a Jamie story. I, I mm. once worked with James Bond jumping out of an aeroplane in an aerospace factory. Right. It's true. Uh, me and Bond were like that, but when it, that job was taken, so I went into electrical wholesaling instead. Um, so, because obviously he had the Bond situation tied up. So, uh, yeah, after that, uh, took a job. But, uh, um, well, Edmondson's to be truth. What uh, was you doing in aerospace? Because you can't say that like, oh yeah, yeah we need to know aeroplanes. Oh, I, I, I made all the aeroplanes. <laughs> Wings and shit. Saying. I can't deal with these two. <laughs> this is going to be a ridiculous no. podcast. No, I was uh, g g genuinely. I used to work with the R and D teams uh, and then sell their new proposals into people like GE, Lockheed Martin, and all sorts of different people. Oh, quite so, interesting. Yeah. Then. Was yeah, that, was cool. that a, so? You've gone from that, and then you're like, right. Well, I'm a bit bored of uh, planes and shit. So why? Nah, the co com company I worked for went through a merger. It's a massive company. It went through a merger, um, and the role I had there was being filled by someone who'd been with 20 years' experience. Um, so, truth be told, uh, there's a recruitment company website I went onto. Um, it wasn't the best, and I I just thought I'd applied for a job at Airbus in Bristol. Uh, I hadn't. I'd applied for a job at Edmondson's. <laughs> so, but like I was, I was 23, 24. Um, I was about to be unemployed. So I went along. I pulled up outside Edmondson's. I'd never heard of before in my life. Uh, I was at the regional offices in Bristol. I had an old Sony Ericsson WAP phone. So I didn't have on. 3G. And I was like, who the hell at Edmondson's? I've screwed up here. So I'm Googling it, waiting 20 minutes for the WAP phone to load yeah, up yeah. to find out who Edmondson's are. I'm like, What's twin and earth and who buys sockets? You know what's coming and, up, mate, that you actually carried on. I've got to say that you, even mate, though you completely balls this up, you still went to the interview anyway. Didn't, didn't, have, a, didn't have a choice. Literally, I had two weeks <laughs> left of employment and I was like, right, I'm going to be out of my ass. So I, I went there and I looked through the job description that, and it was 22 grand a year on a company car. I thought, well, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I queued up, I waited for the, uh, to be called in and they come up, oh, did you do the psychometric test? What, to be working at wholesalers? <laughs> yeah, I was like, did I do what? Uh, and they're like, yeah, did you do the psychometric test? I said, no. So I had to complete that while I was waiting for my interview, went in, and then they offered me um, either a 
they, they changed it now. It was like a, it was a. What is happening? It'll come back. You cut it. Oh man! Tonight it's a disaster. What's up with the internet tonight? Solid. Oh yeah. We just lost you, mate. Just lost yeah, you. I think your internet's going it's down. Mine. Yeah. It was just as you're saying. You done the psychometric test. That was it. Yeah. So I did the psychometric test while I was waiting to go and called in for the interview. Um, and then did really well in the interview. And then they uh, they offered me either the Swindon or the Cardiff branch. Um, so as a what? As a as a sales. Just sales. Yeah, or... yeah. So they used to call it like a graduate sales pro, graduate management program or something like that. And um, so the idea is you, you get placed within a branch. They send you off to, it's a company called Pareto where you do all these different type of sales training, management training. And then they put you in different departments within the branch. Mm. And after two, three years, then if you were good enough, uh, you'd go and get your own branch. You work your way up, sort of you know, goods in, telesales, out on the road, and then you become a, a BM. So um, basically, that's... from what I take from that is from you, Clicking the wrong button. Yeah. Pretty in much. our own electrical firm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much exactly how it happened. So, did, yeah, did, did that. Back back then, you had to do your sits and guilds if you were going to be a rep at Ed's. I don't know if you still do. You had to do your sits and right. guilds. Um, Wait, don't so, say citizen and guilds. All right. City and guilds. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fight! <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, so did, did, did that, um, which kind of taught me the basics of... You know, I mean, I mean, in this day and age, I'm pretty much qualified, don't I? So, let's see some of the uh, electricians out there at the minute. Is it? It's <laughs> not, it's, it's, honestly, it's some of the stuff we we see is. I had a phone call today from an electrician asking me how to wire a pull cord. Well, tell me as well, then. <laughs> mate, oh, 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 mate, the worst part about it was when I'm trying to explain it to him, you know, what what goes into the common, what goes into L L1. He said, oh, "I've only got one cable." I was like, "Mush, if you've got one cable, where's the cable going to the light?" So I don't know. It must be up in the seat. Is that, you're not on a, they, they, You physically can't be a spark, surely. No. Is that, no. Is that the kind of stuff? Right. This is what's interesting. Honestly, we get we guess. Like, you're a manufacturer and you've got a yeah, technical yeah. line. And I was going to drive down to slate. We've got to it already. Do you really get people ringing up like that? Oh man, I, we've had worse. So I, I also <laughs> I also I, I also went Ascot Heating. It's a it's a renewable heating company. And right. The factory made a complete screw up on on uh, one of the manuals, and for the out of hours number, they put my mobile number. <laughs> so I, I kid you not, right? So Sunday <laughs> afternoon, I get some person of a older generation bell me up, say, "Oh my, my heat is not working." I was like, "Who's this?" <laughs> so, oh my, my heat is not working. I was like, well, "What's wrong with it?" Well, it won't turn on. I was like, "What do you mean it won't turn on?" So well, I'm pushing the on button. And the screen's black. I said, have you pushed the button on the back? The main on-off button. Phone goes dead. I'm guessing you found the on-off button. That's the sort uh, of stuff. How many, how many of those, how many of those pumps oh, are out there then? Oh, mate. We, well, we get 33 pallets in a truck and every single oh. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, Do you know what's hilarious? This, 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 I bet, I, imagine picking up a telephone, uh, picking up the manual to look for the telephone number, and it's a mobile number. You're either going to be like, are you sure? Or, right, oh, <laughs> someone's getting a phone call. <laughs> I oh, mate, I'm, I, imagine that literally. I'm doing 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 a washing up right on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> my heater won't work. Who are you? Like, how do you get my I number? Bet do, I bet we could do an old podcast on technical on your technical outline. Oh, that's yeah. hilarious! Some of the stuff, especially I, the heating, because it's so because it's so end user interactive. The, the, the heating and stuff. It, it honestly, some of the stuff we get is absolutely berserk. It, when it, I went to trades, when when always in my life as a trade, I've always been. I don't want to deal with end user. Which is why mm. I don't want to bash. I don't want to deal with the general public because they're thick. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> See, <It's tough. laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't mind it. We get loads of stuff. I, I mean, we honestly, we get it. I've had it on uh, on some of the stuff on the boards as well. Just, just, just mad. Like, um, I had <laughs> we had one. So you, I don't know if you've seen it on the lid. You've got that pip, so you can put the lock in it and lock it off. Yeah, yeah. The amount of people that are convinced that's a magnet, even though it doesn't actually reach anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we, we've had people call up complaining that the lid won't reach up so the magnet can't work. I was like, it's plastic. It's not a magnet. Oh <laughs> it's just not a magnet. Like, and just, just stuff like that. It's have just, you thought about like, putting a magnet on the on the flap of, of it? Yeah, yeah. But when, when because we dealt, we actually read the regs. Um, so when we delve into it, you are not allowed under AM. Uh, that AM that was a massive dig at certain people, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's, um, 
Yeah, it, it, on AM3 or 17th, you can't, you're not supposed to be allowed to leave the lid open. It's got to be self closing in the same oh, So if you, yeah, if but, you've got I, a Mac, but one company was doing a Mac. One, what, that. Well, not only that, there was another company whose lid goes up anyway. And although it's quite stiff, um, oh, it like, overflows and just gets stuck. Yeah, yeah, even though, but you could still technically leave it down. That's the whole point. That was the whole point of Amendment 3 to 17 that you couldn't leave the lid down so it could be accessible. So obviously yeah. with, with a flat like that, you can't. But if you've got well, a right in, saying it, that you potentially could. Am I right in saying that I think BG just changed his design to go up, but screw fix itself on for years that fell down, weren't there? Because I think someone got it a bit wrong. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I mean, they're the sort of comments I wouldn't dream of making about other manufacturers. <laughs> so, that, you know, no, we, I'm not uh, knocking them. I'm not knocking them. Saying, no, I think I, I'm, 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 le I'm legally not going to knock anyone. I'm not. No, I, I think <laughs> I just remember the, there was being for sale in screw fix, and people buying like Wait, the door it opens down, it doesn't work. But I don't know if no, that's no, error or an early metal board or what. How scared are you? Of getting of getting a batch of AFDDs that need recalling. Not point one percent. I'm just saying, like, best not happen whilst you're sponsoring this show. <laughs> <laughs> or, we'll, or we'll bring you up on a Sunday night and tell you what we think here. No, that's, that's... <laughs> no I'll tell you what though, i what is it like being a manufacturer effort worry about that Does it, your product out there do you worry about stuff like that batches of stuff going bad and all that is it just a uh, I, I used to well i used to like I said, i've been doing this 10 years right so verso is is the latest <laughs> generation so i i restructured my company in 2019 um good timing but um <laughs> but to to set it up so the company is called uh pgl group and within that company now, you have Verso, Ascot Heating, and the My Install Rewards and Academy. Previously, it was all just Prem Spec. Under Prem Spec, we'd sell wiring accessories, circuit protection, bits and bobs. And before I was financially able to invest in my own tooling, invest into my own factories, invest into my own mm -hmm. um, certification stuff, I had to do what most manufacturers do, which is import. Okay, so it's not yeah. the shelf product. So, that's, yeah, so that's what I was saying. It's, it's, Already made, but you brand it. Whereas yeah, now yeah. So you your, it. your proper manufacturing now, you're Correct, designing yeah. and all that. Yeah. Correct. So the you you have you have a situation then when you know you obviously you don't have necessarily have that infrastructure to do all the UK testing and blah 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 blah, which is fine. Everyone goes through that process. It's a maturation process. Yeah, yeah. Some people stay there because it fits their business model. Because obviously, if you're doing it that way, it's it's you know it's more competitive. You can you can put product into the market cheaper than we can, for example. There are people that can sell RCBOs cheaper than we can because they make them because it's do you know what I mean? It's a mass produced product with a rebadge situation that comes in. Yeah. But then when you do that, you're also adopting their quality control procedures. You're adopting their certification, their testing standards. That do you know what I mean? So when you're doing that and you have no control over that process, oh, because yeah, you're buying it, you take it or leave it. Yeah, yeah precisely that. So yeah. you're like, okay, cool. You you don't know where the you know, Know, how those components are sourced, what quality standards those components are at, or anything like that. You literally like, here's your RCBO, here's how many you got to buy for this price, and this is the amount of branding you can put on it. The end. Oh, well, you can have colours and different plastics and all that. Exactly, product. and yeah, but the boxes are fairly generic, and they've got a fairly generic sticker, and you've all of a sudden you see the same board with three different names on it, or you see the same socket, yeah, yeah. It, and that's, it becomes that's going on at the moment. No, everywhere, but it's been going on for decades. Like it's, I mean, like I said, we went through it. We went through a what a five, six year period of doing it. You know, and it was the only way I could do it to invest in to build what we always there's, wanted. There's to no do, other way, is there? Like, unless you're going to spunk five million quid straight off. Well, yeah, there's and, no other and, way, and, is there, I suppose. No, it, it depends. I mean, again, if you've got you know a rich uncle who's like, you know, is three four million quid, go go build a business. Then you know, of course you can. Um, would you though? But, I've interested. You, I, I would imagine you learnt a lot in that phase. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and like you say, you know, do I do I worry about recalls now? No, not really. Really? Um, it's just part of the course is it's selling stuff. Well, but when but when you don't have that control, right? And when you don't know, you only know to a standard. Do, do you know what I mean? Like anyone can send you a data sheet. Uh, th yeah. This product's been made to this standard. It's got this certificate. But you don't know what components in there, where they source those components, what quality control checks, how many of that batch was tested, what's so your percentage your, testing checks and everything. You QC's, don't know. Your, your QC's internal now, is it? You, yeah, you, yeah. Well, I own, I, own, I own part of the factory. I own 
the, so the, the factory that make our Verso product now I own as much as I legally can without becoming a Chinese citizen, of which, by the way, I've got wow. zero interest in doing. Yeah, that doesn't happen overnight, right? So like I say, it's, we, we were 10 years old uh, last Saturday. We were 10 years old as a company. Wow. That's, that's everything. People think we've been here two minutes and we've been here a decade. Wow. Yeah, it's really interesting, what? actually, because getting, getting like, how many times did you have to go over to China to sort of find the right factory to get all that? What sort of... Four or five times a year for 10 yeah. years. Wow. Wow. Not, not, not so much in lockdown. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I've been since the, lockdown. I saw you on Twitter getting to the, is it Instagram. You was getting to the local cuisine, weren't you? Oh, mate. Because Chinese, what you get at a Chinese oh, restaurant, what you buy in China, is it? Oh, mate. <laughs> is it not good? Mate. It's nothing like. Chinese food is a westernized <laughs> oh. food. 100%. Well, Chinese food we have in here is, is like an Americanized version yeah, of yeah. what they interpret it to be over there. I tell you, I have eaten all sorts. And I don't even know what half is. I would is, not honestly. Oh, so when we used to be an importer as a company, right, there's, there's a place where most competitive boards in the UK are sourced from. All right. Uh, again, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but the factory and the air, it, but is the, it's the most horrendous place I've been to in life. All right. And Mate, there was a rat the size of a house cat come flying out the kitchen from the the where the people like the mess for the for the assemblers and stuff, the oh. paint dripping off the wall. And honest to God, the food. And I remember saying to the guy who works with me, I said, like, "Never bring me here ever again." This is the oh, because you have to have a host, don't you? Yeah, I know, yeah. I've done a bit. This you have to have a guy, don't you? Knows correct. Yeah, because you have to when when you go over there, you have to have a visa. So you have that has to be sponsored by somebody, and then they take responsibility for you whilst you're there. Oh, you can't yeah. just go there on holiday then? No, no, no. No, you can. You can. But to certain areas, you would need a visa to go to certain mainland parts of China. Oh, that's interesting. So you, you can go to Hong Kong, Ma uh, Macau. I think you can go to Shanghai. I'm not sure. Can you go to Shenzhen? No, I think Shenzhen. So well, it might be a free port. If you want to go to the you markets, you've got to get a guide to walk around there, don't you? Yeah. Well, you don't necessarily, like I say, have to, it doesn't have to necessarily walk you around because when I'm there, I do spend a lot of time independently there, but someone has to take legal responsibility oh, for God, you yeah, God, and your yeah. visa. So you have to have a sponsored visa. Um, but we, I was going over so much uh, that I ended up having a 10 year visa. So it was, yeah, which is probably going to expire in a few years, to be fair. But, yeah. So what's the biggest pitfalls of uh, manufacturing for you? But us, or just in general? What you've experienced to be the biggest pitfalls, things that have uh, really challenged you as a company, um, and problem, and like I don't know, people ripping off your products, stuff like that. Have you had any of that? that that's that's yeah, recently. Is um, it? Yeah, recently. So it's quite funny because <laughs> because where where we've been an importer, you know, in like the let's call it like the first phase of our life, like the first half of our life. And people used to get irritated that we could source the same product as them. They're far more established, massive, hundred million pound companies, but oh. their factory would, would sell it to us. Like, you know, they used to get cheesed off. Well, uh, you know, and you, there's, there's there's loads of cases at the moment where you can see literally people have co where there's not because it's very difficult to patent products in our industry because there's not that much unique. Like to get a patent's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. To keep a patent is really hard, and. You can't, there's certain things they won't allow you to, right? So our, our, our industry, there's very few things you can paint in, really, because nothing that's that unique or that changing, or do you know what I mean? So you, you can protect your tooling, you can protect your certification. That's why understanding your supply chain and protecting that is really important. But yeah, we for the first time ever, so we must be doing something right. For the first time ever, I've seen... So basically, if, you get and, stuff, if you're getting forgeries of your gear, it's, it's flatter, isn't it, basically? Well, it, well, it, it is. It's to be copies. <laughs> it, it is, but it's really starting to piss me off as well. But <laughs> Yeah, because obviously you get that, because you've got inferior well, product with your name well, on not, it. Not, yeah, precisely. And if, if, like you're saying, am I worried about a recall? No, but if something that looks like mine, smells like mine, but isn't mine, yeah. goes faulty, they're going to think that it is mine. And then, I, then I, you know that's going to piss me off. Um, I've had this with a with a major, a major, major electrical manufacturer. And I think everyone would work out that the majorest of major ones I'm on about. And we had some product at, at where I work. It was made in Germany, but it's packaged in China. Mm. And I was like, I picked some of this stuff up and I was like, this isn't, this doesn't feel right. It just didn't feel right. It didn't weigh right. And anyway, after I've gone through it, they said, oh yeah, it's not ours. So I, I, when you scan the QR code, it doesn't quite work. And they said, oh, it's not ours. So there's nothing I can do about well, it. What we've, we've had, we've had it. With, with, with this particular situation. So we we were designing that Verso board for two and a half years, right? And we uh, the first so what was the final draft come over 
Uh, and when we vetted it and went through it, I showed around some contractors, showed around some wholesalers. I was like, I'm just not, I'm not hundred percent. So what I did is I, I, just, I made three or four tweaks and I made the thing taller as well. And uh, oh. sorry, dogs barking itself in the background. Someone's letting off fireworks. <laughs> Where'd you live? Beirut? <laughs> <laughs> South Wales, mate. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we, we rejected it. And then we had to retool the entire range. But the tooling manufacturer that made the tools for us has sold that initial design, which is they, they don't own. Oh, because they've made the tools and they've got to, it. Yeah, which they don't own because they don't own that design because my business partner made sure that he secured <laughs> that in China, sold it to a metal bashing factory who have made it, which we have now finally, as of this week, because again, trying to do anything legally in China from the UK, can you imagine how hard that is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they don't care but, either. Absolutely zero fucks given at all. And so, because it's not their problem once they export it. No. But they won't shut on their own doorstep, will they? They don't, they don't, oh, want, not you up, they don't want you being no. upset because someone else in charge is making their, well, your if, if, you, if, if you ever want to see how much they don't care, have a look at a car called the Land Wing. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen them. I've seen it. <laughs> For the first time I've seen it when I was out there, I was like, is that, that's mental. I'll tell you what I found out the other day. Do you know YouTube are going to let you put music on shorts and long videos? So you'll be able to put Queen on your mm. YouTube video, right? Yeah. And that is entirely because of TikTok, because TikTok is just doing it anyway. And the right. record industry have gone, oh, well, we may as well have a bit of money out of it. So because of that slack attitude they've got, they've actually done something for YouTube and things should happen anyway. But it just shows you how much power that copyright infringement it, doesn't have like no no not anymore no and then and, it, and the amount of the money it costs to maintain it as well is insane so so yeah but we finally managed to crush it now so their supply of that is now zero which i'm very very happy about um same with their um some other bits so but, can yes. i pick up on something there so you had a, you had a finished board with tooling and everything ready to rock and roll and you chinned it off because you thought it needed to be higher mm -hmm. fair enough yeah i wanted two fair more enough. features in it and then dedication well, that's and that's that's why you know that when you look at anything in that with that Verso badge on it, you'll you'll notice that across the board from the socket. We're the only company I know in recent history that have re-engineered their top twenty lines in the wiring accessory to make them better. Most people are value engineering their products to make MK, them. MK, MK is a effective. prime example of that. MK what, used to what, be the gold standard. They ain't no what more. a fall! What a fall for MK! Massive, massive. Yeah. Like, Logic, Logic Plus was like. Brilliant. I don't understand how they went from being like the number one board manufacturer. Num number like if you wanted anything in your house, it's MK, wasn't it? And yeah. then now every council you can't even spec. get a board. Yeah, yeah. Every council spec, every school, everything. everything. Yeah, when I was at it's all we used to sell. Logic yeah, plus, Crabtree. logic plus is still ingrained into people in councils because it was brilliant. And the, the, what it did was I'm not saying no. no that's not why. This. What it did. No, I, heard it was, what? I heard it was shit. No, no. The reason it is, and because we come up against this with our specification, right? So, when you when you look at like a construction situation, the electrical. Let's say you're talking about a ten million pound build. The electrical spends around ten percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's total electrical spend. So you're talking, you know, you're talking about a million pound. Let's say of that million pound, wiring accessory probably makes up hardly any, right? As a value. Yeah. So if I can save you twenty twenty five percent on your wiring accessory spend, but your wiring accessory spend is less than one percent of the build. Are you going to, as a consultant, take the punt on specifying a Verso socket over oh. something that every other consultant is copying, pasting? So yeah, if anything yeah. goes wrong, if anything goes wrong with that, right, per se, they're like, well, it was MK. So why, you know, why wouldn't I spec it? Everyone's always, they're not going to put their head above the But they're still here. in that, they're still, that in small that, saving they're still in that mentality, aren't they? And that mentality, because oh, yeah. we know it's it's not as good as it used to be, I'll, I'll carefully say. But it's but that that's a big thing in our industry, right? Is accountability, because yeah. when it comes down to it, especially with public money, right? When it comes down to it, if someone is going to change a specification or use a different manufacturer, that's them deciding that their reputation, potentially their job, yeah, is yeah, worth yeah. that risk for the saving that you can make. Them. So does that that's leave, a big ask? Does that, does that leave you concentrating on more of a domestic and private electricians market then? As opposed to trying to get, as a, you're not going to try and get into hospital. Is it a waste of your time? Hospitals for sure. Uh, at this moment in time, yeah. But we do an awful lot with local authorities, uh, especially down here in South Wales. So you start to nibble because I imagine it sounds to me yeah. like, like the, the NIC NAPIT thing where oh you got one or the other. 
it's a bit like that, and you're trying to get in there, are you? Trying to say, look, this is yeah, still yeah. Good so we, we made we made we made some some clever acquisitions in people um, about three years ago. So we we took a guy called Steve Pascal on, uh, who used to be a national sales manager for Aco, because uh, obviously everything that they do with housing associations, he helped to structure certain things, put certain things in place, like our CPD um oh. structure we got so the my install rewards we, we, we were planning that for a while so we can you know earn points to get caps and hoodies and things like that i want to i want to go on to that so i want to go yeah. into that in a bit more detail in a bit so we'll come back yeah. to my install, so what, what, that. cool what, what he added to that was the academy because where ACO have done really, really well is that, you know, offering CPDs and training modules and stuff. So we've been delivering Amendment 2 training up and down the country for the past year. Well, not quite a year, whatever, it's been six, seven months. But we've also just had that CPD accredited as well. So that helps you work with those councils um, and then, you know, alongside the specification. So you can do it. Like we've got Carmarthenshire Council, which is like 10,000 houses. We've got um, oh, a few others in South Wales. And so, so, yeah. Just, I just yeah. need to chip in there because you said about the ACO training, which is incredibly mm. good. It's that good that today, I think the owner just lost out to Apprentice One to One at Electrician's Award that Mark won, who was on last week. So uh, nice one, Mark, before we forget, because we get in. Yeah, yeah that's, a, Mark, that's Mark, a big win. I, I love what Mark does, to be fair. So, yeah. Uh, it, I, it, yeah. It, it, he just picked ACO, I think. And I think it was, it generally actually did. He just picked ACO's training uh, to that award. So, yeah, nice one, That's Mark. That's awesome. Yeah, well, fair play because they got a hell of a budget. <laughs> <laughs> they got a hell of a budget. They've got, and they got studio some... and everything. And, Mark, hey. and Mark's just a <laughs> Yorkshire, so he's got fuck all budget because they're all tight. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know if it's a rumour and just people being jealous, but I heard ACO have 94% of the market share. No, I guarantee they do because... For as long as I remember, long as I can remember, when I when I started out in the, in the game, I was doing social housing, and it was the ACO um, wireless bases and all that. Yeah, they, yeah. There was nothing else that could com- really could compete with it. They had. The, I don't know if there is anything yet. Is there? I don't think so. I, I, do you know what? I don't know. I'm talking bollocks. I don't know if there is. You know what though? They just put the effort in there, and it clearly shows. Yeah, you yeah. Just told me something I didn't know there that they've done that. They've, they've got a whole app in. as well. They've got a whole app. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, com- it comes back to that whole specification thing. So if you're currently specifying ACO, which everyone agrees sits up here in the market yeah. and is so head and shoulders, there's all this training, yada, 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 head, you know, forward thinkers in technology. Are you going to put in someone else and take that punt because it saves you 10%? It's not yeah, even who, who, who is going to ship them? <laughs> who is going to move them? No, nah. Well, someone could. It's possible, but there's someone has to put a lot of effort into do that one. Now, we, we talked about protecting products like earlier, like shoulders we've had, right? But they that's something they do really well because because they're always pushing the technology boundary. I think, and I think that's how they stay where they are. They're See, constantly pushing that technology boundary, which keeps them the, so far ahead of anyone who's trying to copy them. This is what makes me... This brings me on to another point that I was just thinking about. Talking about the technology inside the ACO stuff, which is phenomenal because you can like program it from your app, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Savo, a couple of weeks ago, was talking David Savory was talking about what the like the future of fuse boards and is it gonna be smart boards and stuff like that. What is your take on that? And what's your take on AFDDs being mini computers? And what? You, why can't there be an AFDD that does all the circuits in one? How do you mean an so AFDD possible. does all the circuits? So, so Savo was saying, like, the way an AFDD operates, like a mini computer, mm-hmm. it, could actually do, yeah. it could actually do all of the circuits if it wanted to as one. What, as in monitor the entire, yeah. the entire board board. waveform? Oh, yeah. that'd be a nightmare. Because imagine, Ooh. yeah, I'd be annoyed. Like a car, you'd like a car mechanic then. Oh, God, I don't know if I'm going to do this. <laughs> but when you when you think about how an AFTD has to monitor a waveform anyway, so if you take a 32 amp ring, for example, right, look at your kitchen ring, the amount of appliances and interaction it has with a human being and a potential. Like, you can have a 1500 quid Samsung free, fridge freezer and then have a blender from Wish. Like and do you know what I mean? And you can have such a variety of appliance and and it's going to send things. So if you had to try and develop an AFDD that measured every circuit within a waveform boundary that wouldn't trip every time someone turned on a light, um, that that'd be. I mean, Apple would struggle. This is <laughs> that's in my opinion. Well, this is a perfect I, in my opinion. That I don't. I don't. I, I think that's also overkill. It's a perfect time now for me to talk about what I've got you on for. 
Okay. No, well, I ain't finished I'll, with this. No, this is the same thing. It's the same thing, right? Brett, you, you had three, you had rewirable fuses, yeah, protected device. Mm -hmm. Then we went to the breaker, which mm -hmm. changed quite dramatically. Yeah. Then we went to RCBOs, which changed a little bit. Got we got smaller. Now we've gone to FDDs, right? And that's great. That technology's moving forward and doing all this great stuff, yeah. What I'm saying is, why yeah. the fuck are all boards still the same size as a fuse box, uh, as a as a shoe box? Why is the carriage not make, getting changed? Why is the carriage the same? Why are uh, they getting uh, bigger, more space and stuff like that? Is there not, um, I don't think you're not making it because you don't want to. Is there not a market for that? Is that something you, you just killed? My, you killed my conversation. It's the same thing. You're about it. <laughs> oh, I, would, I wanted to get more into smart boards first. Forget oh, Jamie's boring <laughs> conversation. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, award for the um, most boring. Boring conversation goes to Jamie. <laughs> Sweet. Um, well, I can, sit on that I can, one. Sit let, on me, that let, me, let, me, let me try and merge them because I, I do think oh. there is some synergy there, right? So, so I think Sam's right. Houses are getting smarter. Right? I, had, I, had a big, I had a big rant video I put up on YouTube on Friday, which didn't, didn't do very well <laughs> about AFD deeds and pe people, people needing to change their mindset about how we design circuits, how we're looking at circuits in our homes, new technologies like AFD deeds. How's it like meters going into places? You got PV going in every house with a spare 15 grand. Like, you know, there's so much happening electrically in our homes at the moment compared to the last 10 years. I mean, the development last or the requirement Great. in the last three yeah. years over the last 30, it is just massive. So, like, like you said, you, you look at your old fuses compared to sort of your type B stuff and other bits and bobs that we need now, even AFDDs, it's light years. It is absolutely massively different. Yeah, yeah. The movement that's happened recently is far exceed any movement that's happened before, isn't it? Precisely. Now, with that, you've also got, like you're saying about circuitry design. But personally, if you look at Europe, Europe have had bigger boards, like you're suggesting, yeah. for decades. Why? Because they fit everything on radials. It makes fault finding easier, testing easier. It's a, it's a, I want to say it's a better circuit, but the concept's better, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it is. It's cleaner. I can't think of a better way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I yeah, agree good. with that. But it's, but they've been doing it for years, absolutely years and years. That's why they've had AFDDs out there since 2016 in Germany. You know, it's boring as ass builders because it's like, oh, I could put a 10-way board in that you can ram everything in, or yeah. I could put a big board in that's going to take solar, EV, meter, and all the future stuff. They're like, oh, no, we're not paying extra 10 quid. No, no and, 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 as, as, and that's what I was about. So the, the answer to your, both of your questions is quite layered. The, the average home is getting, the requirement of it, it is changing massively. The problem you have is the new houses being built by housing developers are made to a particular standard. Even if you've got a four bedroom house, right? Four bedroom. I'm not going to name a. Uh, pick your favourite big housing developer, right? They're all or the same. Red Row, dickheads. Sure. Like, can't yeah, stop right. building shit. Oh, dickheads, basically. I'll yeah. say it. I know. You, I know other people. I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> He's friends with them. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. They won't spec me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But they'll put in a standard, they will still put in a split load board because it's 20 quid cheaper. Oh, yeah, they'll do what they get away with. So, but the public don't but, understand they're getting bummed. No, but the problem is with that. So that installation is going in based on the minimum requirement. Okay, that's on a new build. So that'd be the ideal situation to put a flush mounted, lovely triple stack board with plenty of space mm. for not only now, but future. And we've got a decarbonization thing happening in the government, blah, 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 blah. blah. Let's be forward thinking. Spend the extra 50 quid, put the right board in for the next 10 yeah. years. No, no, no. They're going to put a 10-way split load board in. They're going to be a garage put in surge and they have to now because of the regs. And then they're going to make you live off a, of a split load board. Fantastic. And it's then not until you then go and put those improvements on the home, the electrician turns around and says, you need you know more smart technologies, more meters, things like that. And Jamie comes in and says, well, actually, to put do it all in properly with everything else, I need a bigger board. And the client goes, well, great. Where are you going to put it? Because I've only got this space allocated. Because there, that's all it's got left. Because the precisely. So that's that's one issue. And then you look on a retrofit situation; it's exactly the same. You look at most homes in the UK, and where's their consumer unit? I completely get the fact you have to support a range for retrofit. I completely. Right. You've got to make it fit. If you if your board fits in the space left by Wallex one, you've, you've got to make more sales at the store. But I think, it, and, and I that's think... the challenge. But the, the challenge tends to be you can, you can, you can go that way to a point. And you can go that way to a point, but the space is allocated for consumer units originally. It, mm. it, it has never been enough because originally the amount of circuits we required wasn't as many because we just talked about the development we've had in the last four or five years compared to the last 20. 
But then where they should be taking the initiative, like you mentioned, on the new build side of things, because we've got like, what is it, 20 million housing shortage in the UK? Yeah. There's 20 million opportunities to put the right board in. None now. of it was solar that's got to get retrofit to a board that's full. Do you know, most of these houses should be, be should have a three phase. If they're going to build a new estate now with over 100 homes, it should have three phase. Do you want to have a scam on that? So, the, so Western Power says we're all our supplies now are going to be three phase because, to be fair to Western Power, I think we're now national grid. They mm. are one of the most forward thinking companies I've ever had an association with. Yeah, they're really, really good. So, they said all our supplies now are going to be three phase. Great. So, you know what the ass builders did? Got private contracts in to put their own network in that then they make Western Power adopt because it's a, even because they'll do that. So they'll go, oh, we're going to put three phase in, so we're going to car charge and that, and they'll go, all right, we're not going to buy you. We'll go and buy a single phase one or something else, and you can adopt it. Mm. So, yeah, the Aspers will whittle out of anything they can. But it's, you know, but then there's not, to be honest as well, like there's a lot of electricians that do as well. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know, we, we do the trade shows. Right? I try and attend as many as I can. Because I like talking to Sparks. I learn a lot. I can give a lot. And it, I think it's good that people can see me. And into, that's why I've got my own Instagram so people can get hold of me whenever they want. And does, I don't care if you've got 50 followers or 5,000 followers or whatever. If you've got a question, you get hold of me. And I'll, I'll answer it. I'll be honest. So when I'm at these trade shows and I've got people going, oh, yeah, but we still split, fit split loads. I ask them why. Their answer will be price. I'm like, hang on. I could we can still have split loads because they've, they've pretty much been, I'm, they're not banned all of it they've pretty much been ruled out of use they, they, they're, they're great they're in a great so you've got one part of the regs that tells you to fit an rcbo okay uh, on, a, on a final circuit and then you've got another part of the regs that tells you how to fit a split line board oh oh <laughs> so like next so the, the rule so even though really this, this, this this regulation here it says rcbo this one says well actually if i follow this bit and ignore this bit i can still fit a split load john's really bad he knows that we don't uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's his bag, isn't it? But what I'm getting at is these ass builders, they're not doing anyone any favours. Everything's the lowest, crappiest shit they can get their hands on. But we, if we, who's going to push back? I think the secret is individual trades are doing retro. No, I'll tell you what, what else is a problem as well. Like, how important do people, when, they, when you buy a house, right, how important is it to go and look at the fuse board? Like, if you wasn't an electrician and you know what we know about the game, people yeah, don't yeah. give a... Fuck about the fuse board. Well, they, they, don't, they don't even know what they're looking at. No. That's the other thing. Uh, until last year, I'd have completely agreed with you. But now, you go and ask, I want solar. Sorry, mate, your fuse board's too small. That's going to cost you a grand. Then people start thinking, fucking hell, that's going to be good. They still they don't care. They still don't care. Like, if you went, listen, new fuse board's going to cost a grand. Or oh, I'm going to fit, like, one of them garage fuse balls next to it or underneath it and ram it in somewhere. Then they'd be like, yeah, do that. Do that. You know, you know who will start caring, and they've got a name from now. The prosumer will start caring first. Yes, of course they will, caring. because yeah, it makes sense for them to care. But the reality is, you you think about the standard house buyer, people buying their first home. They don't care about what's going on with their fuse board. They want to buy their first home. Yeah, yeah. And they want to flip Food. it and then do up their next home. What's it, ironic it, it, is that right, the, yeah. what's ironic is the the three hundred three six fuse board was brought in after the war, and it was made that small to save materials and now we lumbered with that size of thing when all know. around europe they have massive things that they can get all the gear in but like i say um, i think it'd catch on but clearly there's no market for it because no one's making them for the uk are they not the big ones i know you're doing double stack which i'm going to purchase but no one's making a boiler size one and i don't think on, hold on let's go on to double stacks quickly what's a big mm. hoo-ha about double stack why are you so like so, i just, I just stopped, stopped, hold it. on hold on he ain't stopped going on about double stack fuse boards <laughs> for, for like months now the future is having metering in your in your box yeah and the only way you can do that is a double stack because you get loads of headroom double stack is the future because you cannot fit stuff in even on a good even maybe on your fuse board you made a bit bigger you're going to need to put meter in there soon. You're going to put solar in there and you need that space for adaption. Otherwise, if I don't put it in my ass, I'll get bummed down the line and I've got to replace my board again. And I think that is the future is having that Why space above. I'm getting bummed though. I don't understand. <laughs> Everything is I'm getting bummed. Well, you, you always say like, you because you use that funny lingo, don't you? So I have to use my local lingo, which is getting bummed <laughs> instead of mugging me off. <laughs> mugging me so, off. Hey, fucking Danny Dyer. Hey. But yeah, I just think it's a few. I, I'm, I'm, pra I'm saying fuse boards will be bigger, so I've got to practice what I'm preaching and put my own in. Then I do a video going, this is why it's better, because I've got all these CTs in here. I've got all these meters in here. I've got all this equipment in here. 
my doorbell transformer and everything, it all lives here because it should all live centrally. So I've just got a, it's just a project I'm on going with. Um, I feel like... Few balls making, are too small! So I feel I feel like you're making it a bigger deal than it is, but if you like it, you like it. That's what's pro- there's, progress. There's, there's also argument for the opposite way around, right? So keeping your consumer unit and all of your, should we call it smart technology, separate. So we were working with a company down here in Wales who specialise in renewable technologies and making carbon zero homes. And we we work with them with, with Verso and the board and the frame and everything else to develop basically a smart home brain for the one of a better term within one of our enclosures. And they didn't, we said we can build it use, basically using the framework that we've done for our dual stack board. Mm-hmm. We can build it and then you can have it in one contained unit. Now the councils love that idea. They didn't. Again, because when it came to retrofit situations, which most of these projects were on, you wouldn't have yeah, the, yeah. the space for the column. So to have it separately, if there was space up and under, you could bolt it together and just could do use a linking kit. Or if not, you could potentially move it around. So again, it, it, it's one of those. I think you're right on a new build situation. Or if you've got a big enough house or big enough space, uh, yeah, sure, why not? I'd but, love to, if anyone, and we say we love the comments. If you think I'm wrong or right or whatever, just stick us a comment. In, I think you're wrong. I think I you're think, wrong. I think the future is. I'll tell you what is right, though. What is interesting. Well, I ain't finished. I've, I'm paused. <laughs> Listen, the future is the future is having a separate bit to house all your smart nonsense. Like he says, that's the I'm future. I think that's where I'll go. I'm on about, about, all, go. I'm on about meters and stuff like that. But you can put meters in the smart bit and put the CT through on a on a yeah, but CT. No, bro, you're talking. I'm open to all options. I'm open to all options. I'm open to all options, but everyone's got a different situation. They've just why you flustered. can never Look, release getting flustered. something straight away. Why are you getting flustered? How dare you question me? Because <laughs> you're questioning my integrity. That's just... No, the problem is, right, is in my ass, everything's done like an industrial job. It's ridiculous. Mate, did you see, did you see his it. Instagram the other day? He's got bloody um, trunk in. Uh, is it frozen? He's got, it's got trunk in yeah, and conduit yeah, hanging from his ceiling. It's a lunatic, is <clears throat> Everything's industry in my ass. I put some cables into my battery system and they're 10 mil armoured. And my mate's like, just use six mil. I'm like, I don't want no dirty twin earth in my ass, you mug. Oh so like, I've just, I just can't get out of it. And I find putting a bit of armoured and easing a bit of twin earth. I ain't got, a, I ain't got a trunk it for a start. It's just, it's just industrial sparks ass. You know, when you go to an ass, you go, a spark is lived here. Why? Because no. there's a fucking, I don't know, a, a triple pole three face switch feed in the hot tub. You know, someone's lived there. That's what my ass is like. <laughs> He's such a weirdo, isn't he? Um, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, circle back round to the My Install Academy. What is it? Why is it? Uh, and who needs it? Um, we need it <laughs> because, <laughs> because I spent a lot of money on it. <laughs> um, well, it looks at like the My Install started as um, as a rewards idea. So um, we looked through. So we, we notice obviously a lot of big brands when we're developing Verso out as its own division, uh, knowing the board was launching stuff, we knew we were going to go, you know, social media heavy. So we wanted to create like a, like a hashtag uh, basically. So there, there's a, there's a reputable manufacturer out there. They've been around a long time. They, were, they had their own hashtag with a t-shirt on it. Um, but I thought the hashtag was pretty it, mediocre. Listen, it was a, it was a great, great campaign. A fantastic campaign mm. and that's what got me thinking we we need one but i don't want my name in it i want it to be something where, where it feels like the contractor can own it and every oh. installation every installation that a contractor does is theirs so my install was like cool this is mine this is this is me joining the community this is my install using our kit um and so that that's where that name came from um we searched it no one had it so we did it we created the logo copyrighted it yada 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 and we start plastering on everything and then I wanted to develop that then into its own, when we restructure the company, its own thing. So one thing that I, I'm quite big on, so back in the day, I wanted to be a teacher, believe it or not. I'd have made a terrible teacher. I'm not very good with kids. Got to. <laughs> <laughs> Try my best with them, but I wouldn't take on anyone no. else. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was like, well, okay. Oh, the, bit, the best way, what, and again, just speaking to people and things like that. And one of the reasons I really like what the guys started doing at eFix when they first started was, it was all based around education, improving the industry, improving people's understanding. So I thought, well, it's a good opportunity for us to kind of, do, that's where I want to lean to. 
So even if, if if they don't buy our kit, they're still they still know that they can come to us for you know anyone in the industry can come to us and like like I put in my videos the other week like if you've got a question about AFTDs I don't care if you're not buying mine I'll help because eventually you know if you if you need help you're going to come back to us and you know we'll be on it Do you know it is try to create that community and one thing I seen on Instagram which I thought was amazing is like sparks up another country never known each other never speak to each other, all of a sudden mm. create their own. So if someone needed help with something and they know, for example, James in Industrial Spark probably know about it, that, hey, Jamie, what do you think about this, this, and this? Well, I need help with this. Or, or Sam, well, all right, have you done this type of install? Or... No friends. <laughs> There's a lot of that. Uh, I've got to say, some people start spot it off. There's a lot of that goes off. And you're right, yeah. that is a good thing. Like, chatting and, to stuff is good. And we want it to be part of that. We want to be part of that. And so then, then again, off the back of that campaign, I thought it's also a really good idea, a, a good way of rewarding people who are you know who are part of our community that versa community are spending on our products because you know we wanted to build a brand not for the big national contractors or the big national wholesalers it's, it's for you guys because no one does that like they say they do they say but they don't yeah i just <laughs> realized really. that that's a very good point actually <laughs> but, you know, they, they all say they did you know a contractor or you know making contractors smile or whatever you whatever it might be but how many conversations do you have with a contractor <laughs> None. What do you do for the contractor? Like none. Do you develop? Do you take on their feedback and actually develop any product for them? No. So we wanted to do so a lot of that. Obviously, went into our product design, and then we want to do a rewards program. So for every pound you spend for many of our stockists, whether it be online or you know your local wholesaler, whatever, you can cash that in. And you, we, my my first business venture when I was at uni was a clothing company. I, I, I love stash. So like these hats, we get them. They're the same as a, a really expensive hat come out of a, a same factory. We give them away for free. They're popular. Like even the free stuff we do is of the same quality as the products we make. Because the worst thing you'll do is say, okay, well, I've got this free T-shirt. It's shit. Well, the, and then that's what, that's what, in my head, that's what you're going to think about the brand that's written across the front, right? So, like, you know what? I, even... I didn't think of that. That's quite, no, that's yeah, quite that's smart t-shirt. thinking, you, isn't it? You, you, you asked the guys about the hoodies, that we do. They're like they're really good quality. Well, guess they're what? Like, we wouldn't know, would we? No, I got a clue, but I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> well, sign up to my store and save up your points. <laughs> so there's nothing we can this game. <laughs> <laughs> but no, do you know what I mean? And it, the, little things like that. And I'll tell you just said, said, you said, said, a minute. I'll tell you what you just said. When I started out, I, I, I had a little tiny company and I wanted to use Thorn Pop Packs, right? And Thorn mm. wouldn't, wouldn't send me a catalogue because I was little. And I wanted about 2,000. And you know what? how many times have you fallen since? Never. The bunch of cocksuckers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fair one. What's it, isn't it? They're yeah, never going to sponsor us now, are they? Fawn? The fucking stuff shit anyway. <laughs> Do you see what I have to deal with? They're, they're not. They don't exist anymore, Sam. They've gone bust. <laughs> like, the joke's fine. They're not going to sponsor us because they don't exist. <laughs> yeah. But like, I was well, like, I, I think my mate's just taking a job there. Thorn, Thorn Lighting, <laughs> no, Thorn Lighting's gone, isn't it? Was no, it because it was in Leicester? Le- Le- it was in Leicester. It's all gone. Oh, yeah, maybe, but... maybe I've killed a sponsor. Sorry, Thorn. Please <laughs> don't another one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> well, they know what they're getting here. <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, I, I'm very cold tonight. I haven't got a nice Verso hoodie or a nice Verso. I've got some T-shirt that's a little bit too tight for me that I have to wear every week. Um, but I wasn't wearing it this week. I'm wearing a Monday Club T-shirt just because we don't need to this week. We don't need to. Um, so my install, so it's a place where you can go get involved in the community, get mm-hmm. get some reward points, get yeah, some free merch. The academy. That's it. And then you've got the academy on the back of it. So that's where we're going to be doing like training modules, free CPD. So if you're my, my install member, which is free, by the way, you just go in and put your details in. You can then access that. Like we just had, like I say, we just had the Amendment 2 training module that we made, CPD accredited. We're going to be working with uh, JB Electrical to help us structure some, because he, he, he is like a bloody witch doctor, to be fair. I um, mean, he, he talks technical to the point where I, I think he's speaking Chinese. He, he's, uh, you know, had a conversation the other weeks about harmonics and things like that. It's just insane. So um, he's given me some guidance and helping us about, you know, putting some stuff together. And then um, again, say we, uh, Steve used to work at ACO, is helping to structure that all together. So we're going to really start building up that um, that CPD structure. Of well, it. Is that going to be videos and stuff? Is that on your, on yeah, your yeah. So you go in, there'll be a video, walk you through it. Um, so it'll talk through the module and then it's like an interactive quiz. It's just like a, a multiple I'm not, choice. I'm not, I'm not slugging it off. I'm saying it's, so it's a bit e-fix-esque, yeah? That kind of yeah. vibe. 
Yeah, yeah, but we also on. we also deliver them personally, see. So we work with wholesalers like we've done them recently with CEF down here in South Wales, where we deliver AM, an AM2 module in person. So mm -hmm. you can then actually give out the certificates there as well. So it's bit, and that, that's better, to be honest. And we, we also oh, do it. We've done it with the CEF. Like that's extra yeah. marks. A lot of the big brands are just like, oh, here's a PDF we've made. Read about it. Which yeah, or they'll, or, they'll, or they'll work with someone like eFix, where eFix will do all the work and then they sponsor it. So, what I will say is go and check out. Um, the my install uh, page it's in the show notes link to it is in the show notes both audio which and... means it won't be until i put a link up because sam never puts anything in show notes just saying well i do every <laughs> time bruv <laughs> and it will be in there forever now because i'm doing it as we speak all right we can't multitask we've got a guest on dickhead <laughs> yeah but i can't i will never remember because it i will leave uh, it yeah all right fair one eight o'clock sunday night and edit this podcast. All He's right? got me by the balls there. Where are you going, Will? What's happening? Where are we going now? Are you going three phase? Or is it like little yeah, steps? We've had, no, we've had three phase in R&D for about, about 13, 14 months. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. How long yeah. is that? What's... I don't want to tell me the trade secrets, Bob. So you've got your single phase stuff, your three phase. What is the R&D length on something like that? It depends, really. So, like, we had the devices sorted first. Um, so I'm a big believer, like, the board is why someone chooses to install your stuff. The devices is why they stay. Right, because yeah, yeah. If, you, if your devices cause problems and someone's got to go back to, the, back to site till for time, they won't use that again. They've lost their money on the job. It's a pain in the ass when they do it. But mm -hmm. if the board's right and they like fitting it and it, it's right for them, it, it, it tends to be the brand that they stick with because that's what they're interacting with most, really. Do you know what I mean? All they're doing is terminating the, the devices, but the devices have to work. I think but I, the, bo the board, the board is where you know is where a lot of the time goes. Yeah, tough job though because yeah, the Schneider boards, brilliant. The problem, the only problem with the Schneider boards is with the slidey bit and all that is there's not much space in them. Like actual the the carcass of the box and the gubbins inside, it like there's just not enough space to get real neat. It's very tight. I have done one the oh, other yeah. week. You know what I think with Schneider the their boards. And when it was Merlin, the brown rough ones, fuck me, oh, they were brilliant. they were they were bored. Yeah, I'd, I'd take were a, I'd stand, I'd take a bullet through one of them. But the new ones, I think the paint finish is lacking. And please, for fuck's sake, are they going to sort out them four screws? They are gash. They are pure gash. <laughs> like while they're still peddling them four screws, I do not know. But they're, they're still the benchmark, aren't they? Even with those folks. Oh yeah, and Hager a fantastic offer as well. Um, do you know what I mean? And then I mean Dorman have a good offer. Uh, they, they're awesome. Really? A door was still yeah. going? Well, I said Eaton. they have a good offer. They have a, Eaton no, is a good spectacle for railways. Eaton, again, is a, is a different animal. Um, I still say Mem Shield 2 was born mm -hmm. perfection. And mm -hmm. I still stand by now, even though they, even though the superseding got rid of it, it was still the it's, perfect. This will make you laugh. So that we're, when we imported our first consumer unit, we called it Prem Shield. After <laughs> Because I love that membership. <laughs> so, so I used to sell so much that membership at Evans. And I was like, oh, I love that. Uh, so we Did someone it... call, Was it Bill that <laughs> sold it the same stuff? Someone sold membership rebranded, but it was bought off membership. I'm sure it was Bill. Something like that. Oh, so, although someone said on here the other week, someone's bought, bought membership too. Which is a bit, well, I, if I they, if they have, they're sitting on a gold mine. I can't see. I can't see they sold that because, like I say, if you start making, if you could make pods for. Mem Shield 2 stuff, you would, wouldn't you? You'd make a fortune. Yeah. But the, the, um, there's uh, very much doubt. I don't know. I wouldn't. So, um, with these, with this uh, three phase boards, mm -hmm. obviously, you don't, you're not just going to knock out any old bit of toot. Mm -hmm. I would, no. I, I can't really ask you any questions about it because you don't want to give it away. Because are you going to have any sort of um, anything like the slider and stuff like that? Or is that, we, we've got to we've got to dance quite carefully uh, with again. Whilst a domestic consumer unit has very few paintable and protected designs because it's such a almost to a point generic. Yeah. Um, three phase is different. I thought so. Uh, and companies like Schneider and Hager, who are you know, I mean Hager's what four hundred thirty million, and Schneider what a gazillion. Um, their lawyers get paid more than mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> no, I should, so, stupid. Oh, sorry, mate, sorry. No, go on. Are you going to have a glazed door? Are you going to have a glazed door option? Maybe. But, right, if you you should. I'm just saying, yeah. 
Because that's one thing that really annoys me. What I was wondering about that is, you know, when you're developing a range, like, mm-hmm. and I'm really interested in this, I'm genuinely interested in, yeah? You want to make a double socket, you probably start off doing that. But that means you've got to make everything. You want to make a single phase fuse board, you've got to make 16s, A's, B's, C's, the whole fucking lot. Three phase now, and that, that puddle's getting Huge. bigger. Now you've Huge. got to go, are we going to do a glazed door? Are we going to do, um, I don't know, how do you get even start? We're going to do a top box and din rail. Obviously, it's not well, to, 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 to give you an idea. So, um, without leaning too much on what we're doing with the three phase, we, we like I said, it took two and a half years to develop the, the Verso. I think we called it the Smart Design One or whatever. Um, but the Verso board, as everyone knows it, three weeks after we launched it, we started on version two. Wow. So, that because that will take about three and a half years until we're done with that. Yeah, I'll just to that as well. You say it takes three and a half years, but that's not just you drawing a board, is it? Like some people might think that's working out what the range will be, what the color will be, what the print's going to look like. The whole everything. everything, everything. To do I mean, if you, I mean, when, when you pick up a verso board, even a verso socket, right? You pick up, you can tell how much we've thought about every detail, even down to the box, the stuff it comes in. Like, I, I used it, to work at a printing company, and I saw a new box the other day, and I know what print that is, and that's not the that's not the cheap no, it's a, a, no, it's and a soft cardboard that use the cardboard expensive cardboard as well. Exactly, yeah, but, the, but that that was actually so that the the depth of the cardboard that we looked at it that was an investment that was an ROI situation because we looked at from when we used to import and had thin cardboard boxes like some of the cheaper brands because the box is cheaper. But then you look at the ratio of how many get damaged in transit because they're in a shit box. So all of a sudden you have a returns ratio. Well, hang on, we might it might cost 30, 40% more in cardboard, but cardboard's a lot cheaper than a damaged consumer unit. So what, what's your wastage on, on damaged stock because the, the packaging isn't good enough? So you start calculating these things in. Wow. So when you asked me earlier, how much did we learn from importing loads? I know it's deep. I know, I know some people just go, oh, the yeah. money. Some people would say, and they're quite right, to be fair, it's just a metal box. But it's, it's got round, it's got rounded corners, it's got flared edges, it's got M4 it, screws or M5. It's all but there you go. So it's, it's down to how, how many different types of screws are on a board. The, what's what's the grading in the steel? So everyone mm-hmm. talks about this particular brand that have done exceptionally well to come out from where they have and literally dominate the over-the-counter market. But you look at the board, and people say, Oh, you know, the Versa board's pretty much the same. Well, no, the only similarity the board has with theirs is the height. It's the same height, it's 265 mil high. The rest of it, the grading of the steel was three times the size. But the certification standard of it is different. Like all the little features in it to stop the RCBOs twisting, the way the DIN rail sits, the fact we silver coat the buzz bar to increase the continuity. Oh, do you? Oh. Like literally all these little features that cost money, they increase the pedigree of the product are built in. That gets missed, but that's all ROIable because we're not going to be here for 10 minutes. Like I said, we've already been here for 10 years. And our plans over the next five years are an awful lot bigger than they've been over the past 10. And I'm, I'm, I'm 35. My av- The average age of my management team is 31. We, you know, we're going to be here a while. We're not we're not going to be here flashing a pan, make a couple of quid, sell it and, you know, go and move to Dubai or whatever. We, we, we're out here trying to build a legacy and we want to put a brand in the market that in 15 years time, people go, oh, I remember when they first came out. I used to speak well, to their MD on Instagram. Fair one, fair co- yeah. so, I mean, Silver coat in the buzz bar. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that because I don't really know why you bother. No because it, yeah, so it, it, re- it reduces it reduces corrosion on the buzz bar, which over the length of the the it, I mean you're you're not going to put a board in with the intention of changing every year, right? So it it, it decreases the, the the any any sort of uh, corrosion on the buzz bar and it and increases the continuity from the main switch across all your devices. So you have a better um, power distribution across it. It just again, little things I like that. I just realized you said earlier a second ago as well that the biggest bugbear I've got with boards is twisting breakers, and I never even realized oh, it that. drives me nuts. So, it, yeah, well, again, but our import board, the, the Prem Shield board, <laughs> not Mem Shield, but the Prem Shield board, <laughs> I, t- I tell you what, if you put a um, the, the bloody Dinmo to tilt forward, so if you had an RCBO board, luckily back then most people only bought split loads, but if you had an RCBO board because the weight of an RCBO, it would tilt the Dinmo, putting that lid on was a pig. And I know that because I fitted one in the, my missus' salon, which I then ripped out when we launched. So, right, but it, it's 
yeah, it, it was a pain in the ass. And big people, electric, again, we spoke to a lot of electricians, right? And their biggest bugbear, like you were saying, with other brands, and I'm like, I can't put the lid on. This, this, you know, it's not got enough knockouts. The big knockouts are in the wrong place. I can't get the cable in through the back. There's not enough space at the bottom. So if I want to bring my tails in through the bottom, I can't. All I, these different things. I had that with the, with the manufacturer that I've been using mm. uh, the other day. I drilled a knockout and it on now on a, I'm not gonna name this manufacturer because they're they're about yeah and everyone knows I mentioned before but I would out of respect to do it. I know <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> you know on a on a mem two if you drilled a knockout as in if you drilled a hole and it went for a knockout the knockout won't fall out on the board mm. that I used I drilled it I touched it and it just fell out and I'm like great I've got a hole there now yeah. but that, that, I mean how do you even that I, I don't know the heart is it half punch the night works but even it's, like the it's the way it's the way the tooling's made. So we actually had this issue when we first launched the Verso Consumer Unit in January twenty one. Right, we were so hell bent on making the best quality frame set. And the other, what we did, what we didn't do, is when when we did design the tooling, we didn't etch it deep enough for the knockouts. You, mate, you needed to be Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime to knock. Like, bang! Like, Shit, that's not coming out. I so you, that. If, does no one want to drill? Because I'm no, not drill it. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely. No, no, no never, they're never where I want them. They're never where I want them. But obviously, you've done the research. I'm, I'm just asking her. They never yeah. seem to be where I want them. So, what we did as well, if you look at the knockout arrangement on top of our board, I mean, Sam's got one there. We put large, there's a lot more larger ones because people used to complain. You get you used to get a 32, a 25, and then a bunch of 20s, and that was it. Ours, you got you got your, you got your 32s, your 25s. You'll have another 32 towards the middle in case you want to come through the middle. Like when we, you remember when we used to have plastic boards and you used to cut the back out? Yeah, just cut the so we put, you know, some people still like to do that. So we put a larger knockout there and we just, we made it so you could put an awful lot more cable. How many, into how the many iterations is that? How many, to, how many board tops <laughs> you in two and a half years? Mate, we, we put that board in front of, last count was 87 contractors before we signed off the uh, the knockout design top and bottom. And then the first one, why is this knockout not three mil across? But, I, 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 I tell you, no, I had one, I had one at the Elex show in Coventry, right? He comes up to me and he says, oh, I've been fitting, it, on, it was grilling me for 35 minutes, 35 minutes about my board. And it, it was going on about, well, your, your uh, knockout that comes in above your tails is just slightly off. Uh, and he's it, it, right, it's about four mil. But the reason it's slightly off on the 12-way board is so we could fit all the other knockouts in, right? right. Uh, and, and most people use flexi tails anyway, so you wouldn't even notice. And in fact, another contractor actually said that to him. Don't use flexi toe. Said, yeah, yeah, but it still hurts me thumb. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. these are little things that sometimes do piss people off. But they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And they still think. So the first thing I did the following morning on a, on a Zoom call uh, with the factory is, can we move it? And there was a very big capital letters. No. Okay, <laughs> cool. I, I asked. <laughs> but even that type of fever got back. Although he did grill me for 35 minutes and he walked away. Oh, fit loads of boards. Love them. Thinking, really? I think that's a sign of someone's yeah. like it, though, isn't it? If they were to stand there, yeah. what is feedback, positive or negative? Yeah. I think if someone does go, well, actually, yeah, and if and spend the time with it, people think it will do in the future. But well, I to be fair, the wholesaler someone... that he buys it from, uh, a company called LED um, in Leamington, actually called me the following day because he'd been in to say that he'd come to see me. Uh, he after seeing me and going for things, he'll definitely be using this guy. But absolutely loves it. And so you're right; it, it does it does go a long way. And you know what I mean? We get obviously, I get I get people messaging me. They don't like it because they've got their own brand. Like, oh, I'd never use your stuff. And that like, cool. Um, you know, or I don't like it, something wrong with it. Okay, what didn't you like? Oh, I've not fitted it. Okay, well, that's fine. Fit, if you fit I, it uh, and you, and you don't, don't like, like something, they, they want you to go, I'll send you one. Yeah, of course. I oh, mean, I get that all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm really looking at I've seen it all over, you know, socials. I'd love to try a board. If you send me one, I'll give it a go. I bet you fucking would. I'll so, I'll try it anyone's. For free. Well, I got a mortgage yeah. to pay. <laughs> if you, I don't know what though, if, they're, if they're a council, you're gonna send them one, aren't you? You're gonna send oh, the yeah. yeah. But yeah, Mr. Yeah. Fucking ball by Dave Sparky, what the fuck do you think he is? But but, but, but mate, we, we but the thing is is they they've also got this perception because they've only you know may have only just come across us that we are that honestly I, I, I had one person, I think it was on our YouTube comment, oh, I bet you sell it out the back of a shed. Actually, I've got a 25,000 square foot unit in South Wales, mate. I got I got multiple oh, staff for people... testing facility. Because they don't, they don't know about it. They yeah. don't know what's behind it. What did you so start with? What did you start out of interest? What was the first products? Uh, wine accessories. No, talk, talking shit. No, uh, ironically, oh. you're not going to say head torches, are you? No, I'm not going to say head torches. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I see you're getting a phone call now. <laughs> oh, dear. No, I, uh, how does it start? Ironic, ironically, it was lighting. Um, so I, because I started from Starbucks. Uh, so obviously I left Edmondson's uh, um, uh, 
left pushed same thing um Sad. and <laughs> very close yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know that's you know, just a reflection of you not being an employee you do i was terrible an employee. Employee. Yeah. i wouldn't get i wouldn't have given me a job i'll be honest um alexa's playing christmas tune sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I started from Starbucks because, uh, uh, you know, back to being unemployed. And I was like, right, okay, you got a flat to pay for. Um, they'd cancelled the Wi Fi, couldn't afford it. Uh, but, you know, Starbucks got free Wi Fi. Um, so, and for back then, I don't know what it is now, you just better get a filter coffee for a pound and they'd fill it up all day. So for a pound a day. You're not the first person to say this. <laughs> no, I, I, I had a free office, mate. I was buzzing, end of every day. Like, the reason I did 60, <laughs> 70 hours a week, I couldn't sleep. I was like, wired off of black coffee um filter coffee but that's how i started like, i literally used the overdraft on a credit card to get out to hong kong and go to a lighting show but about three days before i'd um i got a really like real bad um fracture in my right ankle from playing basketball so i'm doing hong kong on crutches doing two and a half thousand exhibitors in the hong the massive big Hong Kong exhibited thing there. And I was looking at lighting because lighting is what I did a lot of at Edmonton's and also what I did an awful mm-hmm. lot of at, in Eris, which did a lot of emergency bulkheads and we worked on that. Actually, no, I can't say it a bit, but we we worked on some big stuff. Um, with, oh, so you transferred across? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that it was quite, in, in fact- Talk my, online, do you have interest? I'm just, where did it start? What was it? Did you like oh, bang, mate, out, it bang, out an, bang out an emergency bulkhead? Yeah, is that like- No, a I, I didn't thing? No, I didn't even touch emergency because I knew Coach how volatile like. it could be. No, yeah, so oh. it'd be like your, your, your polo fittings, your um your down your standard GU turn fire rate down lights, your sort of polo discus type round fittings. Oh. Um, what else did we do? Floodlights, you know, all the good stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, all the stuff that you what know, was that, that what was that for? Was it like Micromark stuff? Do you remember Micromark? Oh mate, it was you used to uh, uh, tell uh, all the coach uh, lights and all that. Yes, yeah, so we, we we didn't do the we got asked all the time for the lanterns and we didn't we didn't do it. And <laughs> like it was just all the it was just shit. Um, we even did those rechargeable. Do you remember those rechargeable work lights when they were a thing? No, I don't, man, don't know anything about rechargeable work lights. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> we... <laughs> you know I'd, rather, I'd rather shit my hands. Than... <laughs> <laughs> I just, well, you, you I, I'm just telling you, you know what? There's not many people who will start a company from that and come on here <laughs> to be fair. But it's just telling <laughs> you, I think it's impressive to the people to see like. It does start somewhere, doesn't it? It does start. Yeah, well, it was it was easy for me, but the problem with it was it was easy for me because I knew I could I could separate wheat, wheat from chaff. But because I didn't have multiple millions behind me, right, I had to move this shit really quickly. So when you're bringing in containers, and then the price of what you're bringing in that container, because the product's identical to fifty other people in the market, and the price is dropping while that's on route, right? Oh. By the time you get it, like shit, I've got to sell it, and then all of a sudden your margins are so low, you can barely afford to actually replace it. So that's what was happening to me with lighting. And because there's some unbelievable lighting companies out there. Oh, so you were buying off-the-shelf lights? Yeah, yeah we weren't making them. We're, 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 okay, again, right, we were right. we, we rebranding them, right? So then I started using the profits of that and going into another thing I did really well at Edmonton's, which is switches and sockets. And for some reason, I've got a weird love affair with switches and sockets. I actually prefer our accessory range to our boards. I spend more time over I, I don't know why. Oh, we don't oh. sell no, no they are nice. Many. They are nice. But, and I'm not just saying it. Because our like because of our business relationship, I do like them. I think they're very well made, and they. I'm gonna say this, and I don't know if you're gonna like it, but they remind me of the old MK stuff. Mm. Like good, thick quality, good screws, and all that sort of stuff. They just it's just nice. It's nice stuff. It but is. again, we didn't we didn't reinvent the wheel with it. What what I did with that, I literally I took. I had four of my favorite brands that I used to fit. Uh, not fit. Um, sell Edmonton's for multiple different reasons, contractor feedback, pricing structures, yeah. USPs, etc. I kept all the good stuff and got rid of all the bad stuff and put it all in one range of accessories. And then, like I say, two years ago, we started redeveloping that to improve them again, inline terminals on the spur, for example, you know, just in, like I say, improving the quality of the grading and the materials. But that's because all the profits have just gone back in to improve the did product. You, did you have to bring that old range out as a one to make it work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do. So Except that that that, socket, that was single socket, single lights, that's what, lights which yeah. the whole So that's lot. that's what almost put me out of business. So when I moved from lighting and really committed to wiring accessories, I went all in. I did white decorative flat plate, screwless metal clad IP. And oh I right, you got sorry. I, I, no, I had, I had right. So that's that's what I went all in. We called it style, right? And it was right. it was we work with a factory. They make they make. All the stuff for a 
Um, they've been around for hundred odd years, and um, we, we were bringing it in, and we were we were doing some real damage, especially on the decorative stuff. But when you think your white plastic accessory range is one hundred and forty seven SKUs, Jesus! But, so you've got to, so every every thing really needs one hundred and forty seven things. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I mean what, white, white's a bit different because white, you have things like patches and things like that. You don't have that yeah, yeah, yeah. ranges and stuff. But like with that, then <laughs> you have like when it, then we go into decorative, right? And then you have okay. So we we used to do a satin steel range. You know, your brush chrome, black and white inserts. So your top twenty lines, oh, you now double up on the same finish. You do the same with polished chrome. Then we had a then we had a black nickel range, like a polished black. Then we had a graphite range. And then we replicated that in flat plate and screw loose. I must have had a screw loose. It's a nightmare because I went into a Ford garage to get an exhaust once, and he went, "I went, I want an exhaust." That mate he went, "What model is it? Go and get the register." Says it's just a fucking Ford Transit. He went, "Do you know there are forty four thousand different combination of exhaust system and a chance I was like oh yeah because you've got different lengths and you know, all that so different ages white, and everything else here yeah white like sockets that. brown sockets white inserts black inserts it's but here's here's, top, here's the it? pit that people don't realize right so even when you're doing an oem situation when you're bringing something off the shelf like an import in fact you've got less can obviously got an awful lot less control over that you don't have any control of the the, the production runs so you have a minimum order quantity so you have something like an architrave switch you've got to buy 300 I was going to say to you, what's the slowest moving line in white plastic? What's the what's the uh, uh, switch? Um, this guy's got to be up there, isn't it? Um, I don't know a two gang coaxial socket is pretty shit. Oh uh, right, oh, Jesus! That I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think that. Mate, was- yeah, we do. <laughs> mate, I'll tell you what. I tell you, this is this is another big screw up I made really early on. Right, so a lot of people don't know. So I'm, I'm quite badly dyslexic. Uh, and you can tell if you ever get club. one. Yeah, if you get one of our early catalogues, you can see. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I can read it perfectly, mate. So. <laughs> but um, I had I made the mistake. I ordered four thousand, I ordered four hundred unswitched spurs with neons. I've never so, used one of them. <laughs> right, yeah. My, my point is that the minimum order quantity was four hundred. I ordered four thousand. Uh, it is the best part. We've since discontinued that range years ago because we're obviously running with our Verso. You uh, still got now. I've still got three thousand and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, literally. I think we've sold. What are they good? What are they good for? Fire alarms. Oh, it? Oh, uh, with the neon fire alarm, isn't it? That's what you need. I on mean, fire but 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 uh, I remember when explaining but, like. Because when I take on new staff, like one of the things I first say is, uh, like I had this conversation, Victor, uh, he's probably, he's, I took on Victor in, in July as our sales rep for London Who's South East. Victor, unless you're from like Russia in 1985. Maybe he's from Russia in 1985, you racist. No, he, I think he, he, he's 21 to be fair, but <laughs> but anyway, he's, he's gone at it, right? And he, he, he is working his arse off. But right at the beginning, uh, and he's bought a lot, a lot of new stock as you guys have seen on social media stuff. It's, it's been him to be fair in the last few months. But when he first came in, he was like, oh, you know, they're really sc- new staff, especially young guys are really scared to make a mistake. So I tell him that story. Like when I make a mistake, do you know how expensive it is? If you make a mistake, I, I can probably fix it. So just go out there and do you. But that mistake cost me that much money that when everyone asked me, so, you know, what, what's wrong with an unswitched spur with a neon? Well, an unswitched spur is constantly like, you don't need a neon. <laughs> you know, it's on. <laughs> oh, but, it's not even. So you ask for a product that they make. So they offer it as a Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, 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 they don't they stock make, it. So, no, they just so, offer all these mad shit out for you. No, here's the worst part about it. I I want a spec, and this was really early on. It's about 2015, 14, 15. So we were we were really fresh. So any job, I just had to do whatever I could. And on this spec, there was twenty five of them. <laughs> so I had to order four hundred. That ended up being oh, four thousand. And I was oh. like, oh, for fuck's sake. You know, if so, you go to JCB in just outside, um, is it just outside? Wherever, Stafford. Wherever it is, JCB main factory, yeah. Stafford. There's a big atrium, big round atrium. And in the middle of it is Jesse Boots' first welder, and it's been silvered. It's covered with silver coating. It's all lined there because it's his first weld he bought to make his first thing. When you're that big, you'll have that pallet of fucking <laughs> shitty spurs there. <laughs> well, funny enough, guess what we don't make in the Verso range? A what? So... <laughs> Well, because my, my answer there was that like, if they want one, they can buy someone else's because for 20, <laughs> 20 a year, I'm not asked. But, <laughs> do but you yeah, do grid but, in that yet? Is that something you do? The grid system starts stuff. Is that something? Yeah, yeah. We've got so three you, different types of grid. Fucking hell. This is, and the numbers are, the numbers just yeah. baffling. The numbers are stuck, well, that's, stuck in, baffling. And that's what, yeah, it's, it's vast. And then that, but that's, you know, that that's the hardest thing, right? So you have to be able to finance it, stock it. You've got a lead time, which was four months, which is now six months. You got to finance that up front. You then got to give your wholesaler sixty days credit, two and a half settlement, and then you got to hold enough stock to maintain your supply chain. 
And that's why a lot of manufacturers and, recently, especially with supply chain issues, are just running out of stuff. What a lot of people don't realise as well is he's tooling. People, oh, a lot mate, of people don't know this. So you need a, a bit of buzz bar that goes from the terminal to the live pin in a single socket. It's totally different from a double socket, isn't it? 100%. And that tool makes that one thing, yep. and that's it. And people mm -hmm. do not understand how much tooling costs. It's bonkers. So, yeah. Yeah, and then you've got the certification. It costs us 13 grand to certify that spur with uh, inline terminals. Decent. Wow, this? And, Will, I'd like to thank you very much for today's podcast. Monday Club, we out.